In today's video, we're gonna be discussing water parameters, how you should be measuring them, how you should be monitoring them, should you be chasing different parameters and ranges in your own aquariums. We're gonna be discussing a few different scenarios, how I go about that, and throughout the video, we're gonna be looking at this product, which is a seven-in-one aquarium monitor, which I believe is a pretty budget-friendly option if you're gonna be measuring some of the parameters that I'll be discussing today. Really looking forward to this unboxing, setup, and review, and ultimately discussing water parameters and what you should be keeping an eye on in your tank. Really looking forward to this one, so let's dive right in. So when we're looking at water parameters, there's the obvious ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate, which is all based on the nitrogen cycle, and keeping your nitrates low is always something you wanna do. You can either have live plants to help remove some of those nitrates, or you can do water changes to also keep those levels in check. If you have cichlids that eat a lot of live plants, you definitely need to do water changes to make sure the nitrates stay below a certain level in your own aquarium. And you can do all sorts of tests from your liquid drops to the test strips to kind of see the different ranges that you have in your own aquarium to determine what you should be doing in terms of water changes and maintenance. And some of the other key metrics to look at when it comes to your water parameters are obviously your pH, your water hardness, your total dissolved solids is a big one. If you have a saltwater tank, salinity is a big one. And for all of us, temperature and keeping all of these things consistent is something that I preach on this channel regularly. And I hardly ever recommend chasing these parameters when it comes to different cichlid tanks. For example, African cichlids typically prefer higher pH and even harder water, which is really good for my parameters in my region, which is naturally higher in pH and harder water. But when it comes to something like your South American cichlids, their water parameters in South America are typically softer water with lower pH and sometimes some pretty high temperatures, especially if you're keeping discus. I have a lot of South American cichlids down here in my basement and some of my big display tanks, and I always keep the parameters as consistent as possible, and that's something I definitely wanna measure over time, and that's where this aquarium monitor is really gonna come into play. Okay guys, here we go. I'm gonna unbox this right here. Looks like we have a couple brackets with some screws, and then we have the two different units here. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox these. We're even getting some help here from Rambo. Thanks, buddy. Okay, so here is the unit. Rambo seems to really like it. Pretty sleek. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box here. All right, so here we go. Rambo is making this a pretty difficult unboxing, but let's go ahead and get it out of the box here. Okay, so here we go. You got the instruction manual and everything in the box here. Just like we have the probe which goes into the aquarium and then a cord attachment to the monitor here let's go ahead and get this open okay so here you go this is the screen and monitor it will plug in right here and the other end will plug into the probe which will go into the aquarium pretty straightforward and then it looks like you have your two sensors at the bottom which looks like it has different packets for calibration, which we'll talk through in a bit here. Little USB plug-in, the plug, suction cups, and it looks like mounting magnets. So these will get it onto the aquarium and staying in place. I believe this will keep the unit charged. So just a quick look at everything that came in the box. You have the user manual, the Cactuili 7-in-1 Aquarium Water Quality Monitor, the probe, the cord to the display, you have your USB cord here for power, you have your suction cups, magnetic clips, the pH buffer powder for calibration, and then these different clamps and screws as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get this attached to the probe here. Rainbow stop. And then the other end goes to the display. And there you go, they are both connected and ready to go. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get the USB connected here. I'm gonna put the suction cups on the back of the probe. And remember this probe is gonna go into the water and the water level is gonna be maximum right here. So this part should be out of the water. Uh, the recommended water level is this middle line. So I'm gonna try and do that so that I'll have this part in the aquarium and this part on the outside of the tank that I can clearly see the display and all the different parameters that I can monitor with this device.
You may have seen in a recent video that I just picked up a pair of Epistogram McMasterite Gold. They're absolutely beautiful, but they can be pretty picky when it comes to their pH and their hardness level. And like I said, I have high levels of pH and I may need to lower that if I want these guys to breed. So this aquarium monitor is gonna be perfect for this scenario. I can keep it on the side of the tank and just monitor the pH level and if I am trying to reduce that through different chemicals or other methods, I can just see it right there on the monitor so I can lower it gradually and then keep it consistent. And the same could be said for discus. If you want to breed them, you may need to lower your pH a little bit or your hardness levels. And to do so effectively, you'll definitely need to monitor that again using something like the Cactoily Aquarium Monitor. And the last nuance is if you're keeping wild caught fish like wild caught discus, or wild caught cichlids from South America. Those fish can sometimes be a little more sensitive since it's not the same type of water that they're accustomed to or were bred in. But for a majority of the fish in the hobby today, they are tank bred. So they are basically bred in water parameters that are gonna be pretty similar to what you have, whether that's a higher or lower pH or even a hard or soft water. So this aquarium monitor has seven different readings and there are a few that I'll definitely use regularly including the temperature since I'll definitely want to keep an eye on that. And I've used a lot of different gadgets and thermometers in the past and they always seem to run out of battery or just not be very accurate. So I'm looking forward to this monitor to just keep a more accurate reading and always be plugged in so I don't have to worry about that. And then pH is definitely a big one and I'm gonna be using that for my epistogramma and potentially discus if I ever get into breeding them. It measures salinity, which is a huge time saver if I still had my saltwater aquarium. I kind of wish I had this monitor a couple years ago when I had that tank. If I had a saltwater aquarium, I would definitely get one of these as soon as possible. It also measures electric conductivity and specific gravity, which I don't know how often I would use those. TDS or total dissolved solids can also be a really big metric for anyone into saltwater tanks. You want to keep that usually as low as possible. Or if you have something like Neocaridina shrimp like Alec has in his 10 gallon water box, this would really help him monitor those readings. And lastly, ORP or oxidation reduction potential. Not exactly sure what that is, but I'm sure it's important to someone. And if you go on Cactoily's website, there is a whole chart of all these parameters, the ranges that they would recommend, and the accuracy. We'll compare it to some other measurement and tests that I use regularly down here in the basement just to make sure all these parameters are correct and that they can be relied upon. So some methods I've used in the past for temperature, like I said, were some of those cheap gadgets off of Amazon, which I've thrown all of them away. But I also have a few power heads and pumps that has an app that shows a little indication of what the temperature is, which is really useful. And whenever I put the aquarium monitor on my 150 gallon tank, I'll compare the temperature reading on that to what is on the heaters and what is on the pumps app. I also had this salinity tester from Hannah, which is a leftover gauge that I used on my saltwater tank, but it works on freshwater as well, which gives a really accurate reading of salinity and temperature. So I'm gonna measure some of the temperature with that as well. And then lastly, I'm gonna look at the aquarium co-op test strips, which I actually use for just quick dabs in the water to get a gut check of what the pH and nitrates are in my tank. And I'm really gonna use this one for the pH comparison. The last test that you likely have seen out there is the API test kit or the master test kit. And those do take a little bit of time because you actually have to be a little chemist and drop all the little drops into the vials and then shake them up and wait for the reading. And I do think some of those are pretty accurate as well but this one's gonna be much easier and less time consuming and just give you an easy view of some of those parameters right away. So just a few observations right off the bat and some of the key features of this aquarium monitor. It does have a pretty easy to read and nice LED display here where you have seven different measurements that are clearly visible. It is a pretty good sized screen as well, about an inch and a half. The probes at the bottom definitely look like they're quality and well-made. I think this is also gonna be really good for anyone that has specific freshwater needs or if you have a saltwater aquarium, I think you definitely need something like this. And I would say one of the last observations or features is maybe the most important, which is price. When you look at other aquarium monitors out there, they might be in the same price level, but they likely aren't measuring seven different metrics all in one. Or if you get something really advanced that are measuring all these things, maybe they have more bells and whistles, like an app on your phone or something that sends alerts. 
all those things definitely cost a lot more and the price range goes up really quickly with aquarium monitors so I think this is definitely a really good budget friendly option if you want some of the basic metrics like temperature, pH, TDS, and salinity. So my general advice when it comes to your water parameters is to always keep ammonia at zero, nitrate zero, keep your nitrates as low as possible and keep those low with either live plants or with some water changes to keep those levels appropriate for your fish so that they stay happy and healthy. But when it comes to some of your other parameters like your pH, water hardness, maybe your total dissolved solids. I would just say keep those consistent and don't chase different parameters just because you hear a certain fish requires a certain parameter. There are some nuances like I discussed today with breeding like a pistogramma or discus, or if you wanna breed African cichlids but you have very low pH for instance, there are some things you could do to induce breeding. But if you're not inducing breeding or you're not keeping wild caught fish like wild caught discus that might be really sensitive, I think everything should just remain consistent. And if you're using something like this Cactoily Aquarium Monitor, it's really easy to just monitor this and make sure everything's as consistent as possible. Another thing I really like is just having a really consistent and easy to read temperature that's not gonna lose its battery. It's plugged in directly so it's 24 hours. You can just walk by the tank and just easily see and make sure the heaters are working. One of the most annoying things in the hobby or devastating things is heater failure. But that would just be a safeguard against anything like that. So I do think it's a pretty cool gadget to have. If you're keeping a saltwater tank or a big expensive reef, you probably already have an aquarium monitor of some sort. But I do think this one is a really good option if you don't wanna spend a ridiculous amount. This is right in that 100 to 150 price range depending on the model and the type that you go for. And some aquarium monitors that I see out there, some of the more popular ones are four or five times more expensive than this. So I do think this is a budget friendly option if you are in the market for one. I also do like the accuracy that I found with this aquarium monitor with all the different tests I did. This came out right at the same level that I was expecting and setting this up and calibrating it is super easy as well. You can basically get it right out of the box and not really need instructions in my opinion and set it right up in probably just a few minutes. And if any of the key features of this product look like something that would benefit you and you would like to get one of your own, I'll leave a link down in the description below as well as a discount code, I believe it's Cichla Bros and it's just gonna be the first week or two. I'll leave the duration of the discount code down there as well. If you're seeing this in the future, the price range may have changed, and I'm not sure if the discount code would have expired, so you can just find that all in the description below. I'll keep that updated. So that's a summary of your water parameters, why I would recommend keeping things consistent almost always, but there are some specific instances where you might need to chase those ranges just a little bit if you're breeding or keeping specific fish but in general, consistency is key, and I think having a product like the Cactoily definitely makes things easier, especially if you have multiple tanks and you don't wanna be testing every other day. And I'm gonna show some updates along the way as I get into the breeding projects with the Epistogramma, with the Cuban cichlids that I picked up, and just in general, some of the other fish room updates are gonna be coming fast and heavy, so definitely make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching, and We'll see you next time.